This is Bob again reporting. It is June 10th, 2015. This video starts with some brief excerpts that are videotaped from the state website showing sections of the debate and presentation on the Senate floor and the House floor of the so-called Lights on Transportation Bill. My point in producing this is simply to make these clips available to the media to help them see that there really was about $30 million taken from an earlier appropriation for Southwest Light Rail. That has been canceled and that money has been repurposed to operating costs for the Met Council. This has unfortunately gone unreported uh, in other media and news sources. I've been reporting it for three weeks. Here are the clips. Uh, in the Metropolitan Council, uh, what we've done is uh, there was a $37 million appropriation made in the last biennium, of which uh, $7 million uh, has been spent. This is for a capital contribution to uh, a transit way in the southwestern portion of the metropolitan area. Uh, and uh, uh, we just simply uh, canceled the remainder of that uh, appropriation and then uh, repurposed that for uh, a number of uh, purposes that the Metropolitan Council has, um, including bus operations, transitway operations, um, the uh, arterial bus rapid transit on Snelling Avenue is, for example, going to be coming online in December and they have some operating needs um, and actually some, some capital needs because uh, the Metropolitan Council is not going to be included in any capital bill, um, uh, we don't think, uh, should a capital bill come up uh, this year. Um, there's also some uh, small dollars, uh, two million dollars appropriated to the uh, replacement bus service providers, what we call the opt-outs, uh, for a demonstration project that's on a one-time basis. Um, these uh, transit management organizations on a one-time basis receive a little bit of funding to replace them that was lost through the MAP 21 uh, uh, federal surface uh, transportation bill. Um, I should back up um, those uh, repurposed dollars that are going to the Metropolitan Transit for operating um, do occur on an on a ongoing basis. Um, the understanding is that uh, should we um, actually pass a larger investment bill, we'll revisit that decision. We've got a uh Transit, we start with uh, $5 million investment for Greater Minnesota Transit, Transit so they can continue their services across the outstate areas. It captures uh, $30 million in, in un unobligated and unspent funds and moves it to the Met Council where they can use it for their transit uh, initiatives. We expect about approximately $6 million of those funds to go to Metro Mobility. We also have uh, Developed $2 million for suburban transit providers for pilot projects. Uh, Chair Kelly, yield to a few questions. He will yield. The gentleman from Washington, Representative Sean. Thank you, uh, Representative Kelly. Can you just give me a little bit of the insight on the $30 million in the unobligated and un unspent, what accounts that came from, and uh, the, the, the history of where that, how, how we came to that? The gentleman from Goodview, Chairman Kelly. Mr. Speaker, if I've shown, uh, that $30 million approximately were funds that were unencumbered and unspent uh, due to the Southwest light rail. And as we know, with the increasing cost and, and over-budgeted items, uh, the governor's office, along with many of us, were uh, deeply troubled by that and, and suggested, uh, even the governor's office suggested, we go back to the drawing board. So instead of uh, throwing good money after bad, we uh, discussed this with uh, with uh, the Senate and they agreed that repurposing those dollars towards Metro Transit and allowing them to use that really for their purposes uh, where they were comfortable, uh, we thought that would be a very good plan. No, I think this is Bob again reporting at about 7.50 p.m. on May 18th at the legislature. I'm at Tree 1, which I've designated as a spot to talk with people about transit options and to interview people who are available uh, pretty low participation in that, unfortunately. The uh, House and the Senate today passed a so-called lights-on bill for transportation. 
there's disappointment that the full amount that uh, Governor Dayton and the House Republicans are very close to agreeing on for roads and bridges is not part of this. Uh, but there are some significant elements in it. Uh, one uh, area of progress, from my point of view, is that the on, House okay. has uh, curtailed about $30 million that was going to be spent for Southwest Light Rail. And that's now available for unrestricted spending for the Met Council and uh, Metro Transit. Right we've got a Trius. spot. I've got a spot here for the uh, Stadium right. Next to you want. So right. right above here. All right. So, hey, Tim. Hit it number one. 20, 20 years ago. Cool. Uh, this is Bob again, and I'm talking with Representative Tim Kelly, who's the chair of the House Transportation Committee. I'm sure that you the president. feel that it's unfortunate we didn't get a full bill. What do you think about the bill that we did get? Well, I think it was, it was a good bill, Bob, uh, for where we're at in the process. Uh, we'll, we'll go in on March 8th, and now we'll get our bill uh, going from that from that time period. So we'll be picking up from there. Yep. Uh, and as uh, you know, uh, there's about $30 million that was going to go to Southwest Light Rail Capital, and that now has been uh, eliminated from that program. It's available as unrestricted spending for... Uh, Metro Council and Met Transit. That's uh, right, and we have our vigilant people around here at the Capitol that uh, do some fantastic work, like yourself, Bob, and we really appreciate it. And, and uh, let's talk later about uh, how this process worked. I'd be interested in talking with you about that later. You bet. Um, how is Metro Council and Metro Transit reacting to the operating budget that they've got right now? Well, what are the what are they telling you about that? They're, they're of course, uh, concerned that they, their operating expenses going forward are going to be uh, hurt significantly. But I, I think they'll they'll make do just fine, and, and I think they understand that going forward they'll they'll have to make some adjustments in how we're funding them. So, uh, do you hear from them? They're talking about any layoffs or any uh, service cuts Not at this that point. Not I'm aware of. Nope. Good. Nope. Well, that sounds great. I appreciate you taking the time here. It's uh, a long session and. This is almost uh, government by, by ordeal for legislators at this point. Thanks, Thanks for taking the time. Can I ask one question? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. I just wanted to know uh, if one of you can handle it. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yep. Yeah. All yeah. Right. We've got uh, Captain Jack Sparrow Captain here. Captain Jack Sparrow, I'm running for, I'm running for okay. Senate District 62. Right, you bet. Yeah. I want to know yeah. what role Bob played yeah, in, 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 in this getting this uh, so $30 million dollar, uh, 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 over to the Met Council. Oh, actually, Bob's been very good about bringing information and, and uh, information that a lot of people just kind of let go by the wayside and um, he brings it forward in such a way that he presents it and we can look at it and see if it's if it pertains to what we're doing and, and it absolutely did in this case and we appreciate it. So it's been a helpful, helpful role then? Absolutely. Yeah. Great, thank you. Yep, you bet. Thank you. Thanks Bob. You bet. I think so, yeah, three items actually. All right, you have three minutes. Okay, a real good. Bob again, Carney Jr. I'm a registered lobbyist for We the People Informal Association from Minneapolis. Uh, first of all, I wanted to let everybody know the legislature passed this so called lights on bill, and there's about $30 million that had been appropriated for Southwest Light Rail to be available starting July 1st. That has been repurposed, that's the phrase that they use. And I'm happy to say that that is now available to the Metro Council and Metro Transit for operating purposes. Uh, my understanding is that uh, given the current situation, uh, it would have been very difficult to come up with that much mo additional money for operating. So I'm really pleased about that. And I just want you all to know that in terms of transit, I'm very strongly in favor of transit and bus-based and other alternatives. Uh, second, I wanted to let you know about a lawsuit uh, judge uh, Tunheim, who is the same judge as the uh, two uh, cases involving Southwest Light Rail, uh, issued a preliminary injunction earlier this week on a separate case up in Fargo-Moorhead. And the issue turned on uh, whether construction could begin on some uh, dike works and uh, water uh, flood mitigation. Uh, he shut down a construction project, and the reason was that the plaintiffs would suffer irreparable harm both for a violation of the procedures involving not following environmental law 
Uh, and also, the, uh, one of the cases cited was Sierra Club case. Uh, and the phrase from that is bureaucratic steamroller. And the judge said that there's a danger that a bureaucratic steamroller would take over and would make it uh, difficult, in effect, to have a no build option. So I just wanted to let you know that that is a case that is proceeding and that ruling occurred. I hope you all take a look at it. In late April, I announced a campaign to win a Pulitzer Prize for investigative journalism covering the Southwest light rail story, and in particular also covering the role of the media in that story. My view is that, in effect, on a de facto basis, they are participants and they are shaping the story, and I believe that they're influenced by a very powerful group of interests uh, that appear to be centered around the Met Council. My own involvement uh, is partly as a lobbyist and an advocate, and I disclose this, but I want to emphasize that I think it's an illusion to think that the media is looking at this and presenting things in an objective way, and I'm challenging that idea as part of my coverage on this story.